infrared spectroscopy is a very powerful tool to determine the structure of a molecule that you have as a sample. This video will talk about how to prepare samples for infrared spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the science of exposing a sample to electromagnetic radiation or light and observing the light that passes through the sample or is scattered by it. Some of the radiation at particular wavelengths will have been absorbed and other wavelengths will not have been absorbed. That gives you information on how the molecular structure is put together in the sample. The question becomes, how do you actually hold the sample in the light path? When you are doing this spectroscopy in the visible region, you used a glass cuvette or sometimes a plastic um, square cuvette. You can also use quartz ones because these are transparent in the visible portion of the spectrum. Unfortunately, they're completely opaque in the infrared, so you can't use the nice, easy, and cheap ones. It turns out that alkali metal halide, sodium chloride, potassium bromide, and so on, are in fact transparent in the infrared. And so we use cells actually made out of sodium chloride or potassium bromide crystals. I've got them on the bench here so that you can see them for the camera, but uh, they're actually fairly delicate, so they do need to sit on something like a chem wipe or a plastic tray so that they don't scratch. <clears throat> there are three disadvantages or problems with a sodium chloride plate. One is they're water soluble, just like the salt you put on your chips. And so if your sample is wet, they can dissolve. Another one is they are fragile. So if you drop them, they will cleave neatly along the planes. And these are old um, cells that have been dropped and broken. They're just barely usable. Um, obviously, it's better if you don't break them. But uh, they are significantly fragile. The other thing that can happen is they're not, they're not terribly cheap. These ones cost about $35 a pop. So I'd really rather you didn't pop them if you can avoid that. They start off water clear. If I take a piece of printing, for instance, if I hold this fairly new one in front of it, you can see straight through it as if it was window glass. If I take one of the older ones that have been through the wars, it starts to look like bathroom glass. And what has happened there is it has started to dissolve the surface with wet samples. It's inevitable, but we do try and slow it down. Let's talk about actually preparing a sample. Liquid samples are probably the easiest of all to do. The first thing you need to do is actually clean them off. So we use some dichloromethane or methylene chloride. And this is just to make sure that you're running a spectrum of your substance and not somebody else's, whoever it was that had them before. So rinse it off with some dichloromethane and rub with a Kim wipe to remove the methylene chloride so that you're not running a spectrum of that. Once you have done that, put the cap back on the methylene chloride, you may have a liquid sample to run. It's very easy. You just take a drop or two of your sample, put it on one, holding the other one by the edge, pick it up, and you've made a sandwich. And that sample is now ready to run a spectrum of uh, in the liquid form. There are two different kinds of FTIR, infrared machines. The gray and blue ones are Perkin Elmer's, and we've got three of them. We'll show you how to use the Nicolet in a minute. The first thing we do over here is take your gloves off, because we don't want your gloves contaminating the keyboard or the mouse. So get rid of your gloves and click on New. And then over on the other side, click Scan. You'll get a pop-up window which will start to prompt you. And you click on Start. And it will tell you it's a duplicate file name. Just ignore that. And then you are now ready to place your sample on the instrument itself. 
to do this, we open the lid and the sample will actually sit on the shelf of this holder, which lives more or less permanently in here. The infrared actually passes from one side to the other through the sodium chloride plates. Pick up the plates by their edges and put them on, balance them on their edge on the shelf and then close the lid. And we're now ready to scan. Over here, we click on scan, and the machine is now doing precisely that. It doesn't take very long, and it will throw up some questions. At the moment, it's telling me it's a bit strong, but just accept it anyway, and it will again tell you you've got a duplicate file name. Overwrite, you may need to tell it twice, and here is my spectrum. Now, there is a point here where I can label the peaks. So this will put numbers underneath all of my principal peaks here and tell me where the absorbances are. The other thing I need to do is put my name on it. So I click on text and type in my name. And what it is. And once I've checked that, that it's OK, click OK. It will appear somewhere in the middle of the screen. You can click and drag that so that it's not in the middle of an area of interest. And then, up here, print. And the printer is right next to the machine. And it will produce a spectrum. And that is my spectrum. I can take this away, and it'll form part of my report. Now, if all else fails, read the instructions. They're on green pieces of paper for the infrareds. Once you've actually run your spectrum, there's almost certainly somebody in a line waiting behind you. So we have cleanup. Take your sample. Again, put it in the plastic tray. Don't carry it in your fingers for very long. And take it back to the workstation. What you do with these is open them up, wash them with dichloromethane, wipe with a chem wipe, and put them back into their original tub. If there is someone behind you who is waiting, they may well be prepared to do that washing for you. However, <clears throat> if you don't have somebody behind you, it's your responsibility to make sure that these cells are clean before they're put away. Let's move now and show you how to run the same kind of spectrum on a Nicolet spectrophotometer, a different machine. This is a Nicolet machine. It uh, is made by a different manufacturer, slightly different things to do, but it works in exactly the same way as the Perkin Elmer. This is the beige one. We've got one of them. Again, the sample compartment is here, and your sample actually sits on a shelf, and the light path moves across here. Take your sample and put it on the shelf. Close the lid. Again, remove your gloves because we don't want contamination to happen on the keyboard here or the mouse. Now, what I've got here is someone else's file. So I click File, Clear All. And yes, I do mean that. And then close that little button down here. If you double click on this, you'll shut down the software, so do be careful. Then click on Sample. And it will start to scan my sample. It's telling me it's auto gaining at the moment. Here we go. Right, now for this one, you need to control T to get transmission instead of absorbance. And here is my spectrum as recorded by this machine. Here, I need to actually click on the tick tip of various absorbances, and the machine will then label them with numbers. And then I need to put my name and uh, what it is here.
And once I have that, click on print. And there is a printer again right next to us that will give us the spectrum. Once we have finished with this machine, again, remove your sample and wash it off and hand it to the next person or put it in the tub for someone to use later. And that is how you run an infrared spectrum. In conclusion, in order to run an infrared spectrum, your sample has to be on either a sodium chloride or potassium bromide plate, either in liquid film form or as a mull in mineral oil. You should now understand how to pre prepare a sample for infrared spectroscopy and to run the spectrum using an FTIR.